Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to share recipes in a featured category. Excuse me. Today's category is Dinner in a Hurry. I'm Beth and I'm joined by Katie and Elizabeth to tell us about the recipes. So, Katie, tell us about your recipe. All right. So, the recipe that I am sharing today comes from this book that I got from the library. This is Jamie Oliver's Five Ingredients Quick and Easy Food. Uh, the recipe that I chose is called Sorta Salmon Niswa. And you can see his beautiful picture of that right there um, in his book. And I love salmon niswa. It's one of my favorite things to eat and to make. Um, but this was a new technique for me. And when I read how he made it, I was like, okay, I have got to try this and see if it actually works. So what you do is the first sentence just threw me. You place the salmon skin side down in a colander over a pot of boiled salted water covered to steam for eight minutes. So I've got to find a pot that fits a colander in it, but doesn't touch the water so it's steaming and then can be covered. I was like, okay, what am I going to dig out that works? What I ended up using was just a pot with like one of these old school steamer baskets. And then it, it was able to fit it in there and then get the lid on. It, his recipe, it calls for making two servings. And I don't think I could have fit two pieces of salmon in here. So I, I was like thankful I was just making it for myself so that this would actually work with what the supplies that I've got. Um, but it did end up working. Um, so you're steaming your salmon for eight minutes and then you have your trimmed green beans and you at the six minute mark. So when you've got six minutes left, you lift up your salmon from your boiling water and you put the green beans in the boiling water underneath the salmon. At the five and a half minute mark, you do the same thing with some eggs to hard boil the eggs. So you've got your green beans and your eggs cooking below your steamed salmon um so once that is cooking all together you make your dressing which is a bunch of chopped come out of olives mixed with greek yogurt and then um, he added red wine vinegar to that but i had these beautiful come out of olives in this lovely olive brine and i thought well why not add the olive brine to the dressing instead and make it extra olivey so that's what i did and it turned out good um, and season your dressing with salt and pepper. Once everything is cooked, you remove your salmon to a plate and drain your eggs and beans. Toss your beans in your dressing, and then you put that on your plate. You run your eggs under cold water until they're cool enough to handle. Peel them and cut them into quarters, and then you flake your salmon over top of your beans, discarding the skin, arrange your eggs on top, dot over any remaining come out of olives that you have, and finish with uh, just a drizzle of olive oil and uh, some freshly ground pepper. And that's it. That's how you make sort of salmon niswa. Um, I the only well I don't know that I would do it this way again but if I did do it this way again I would cook the eggs just slightly longer you can see in the picture of mine that um they're slight they're kind of soft boiled and I like mine a little bit more hard boiled than how they came out even though they were still like totally delicious it's just a personal preference I would put the eggs in at the same time as the beans that's the only thing but it was really interesting, like kitchen experiment to try, basically. So I had a fun time with it. And it was simple and it took like 10 minutes. Like it was so fast. I had dinner like that. So it fit the category perfectly. Yeah, that is fascinating. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, sure. It all <laughs> makes sense. I just never would have thought about that throwing it all together. I mean, 
and to do it that quickly wow. yeah yeah that's like yeah that's that was wild I that's it sounds really good I my first thought was also the steamer basket but I think that you know you if you're doing like you said it would be hard to fit like a lot of salmon mm -hmm. in that but wow fascinating sounds good and you could do it with some other fish probably you know like mm -hmm. if you're really in a hurry and you have this fish that you need to eat, I mean, it goes to show you that yeah, you can, you can throw something together, uh, sure. yeah. cook yeah. your veggies at the same time. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> wild. And your eggs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have done that with like pasta and cooked my veggies. You know. Yes, me too. Um, yeah. So yeah, very cool. I like that. All right, Elizabeth, tell us about your dinner in a hurry. Okay, so mine comes from a website that I don't know that I've mentioned before, but used to be one of my favorites, and then I forgot about it, and then I rediscovered it, but it's called Budget Bites. Um, she has a cookbook that came out a while ago, and um, I use this, like, all the time in my younger years, especially as I was, like, still learning to cook, and it's so accessible and um, really simple ingredients, and I like how she, it, it talks about the cost of everything, too. So she'll like break down the cost per serving of each meal, which if you are on a budget is pretty cool to be able to say like, okay, this was $4 per serving. I'm getting, you know, anyway, whatever. And so um, this is a recipe that my two friends who are now married made for me like years and years ago when I was over to their house for dinner. And it was like, I remember being really good at the time. And so then I asked them, they told me it was from this budget bites. And then I used to make it. But again, I forgot about it for years and then I re remembered it for this category. So this is basically just easy pesto chicken and vegetables. So this is super simple. Essentially, it's just a bunch of, it's basically like a stir fry, but not Asian themed. So you chop up a bunch of veggies, you chop up some chicken breast, you're cooking them, and then you have some store-bought pesto. You could use homemade if you had some in the freezer, but because we're doing dinner in a hurry you know maybe you just have a jar of pesto and you put it together so it calls for um a bell pepper a zucchini um a yellow summer squash a red onion and then basically like sh again she said whatever you want like she threw in some green beans if you had those it's so flexible I think you could pretty much do whatever and then um some boneless skinless chicken breast and um pesto salt and freshly cracked pepper and then you top everything with parmesan so basically you chop all the veg you cube the chicken breast you add some olive oil to a skillet you add the chicken and saute until they're starting to get opaque you know, the pieces are starting to get opaque and then toss in the veggies depending on how you like your veggies you know you can time it you know maybe you put the bell pepper in or the uh, maybe put the onion in before the bell pepper or whatever you know and then you just kind of are sauteing until things are just softened, but still, you know, fresh feeling. You don't want it to be like mush. Um, and then you turn the heat off, add the pesto to the skillet and stir until everything is coated. Uh, you can add some salt and pepper to taste. And then you sprinkle the Parmesan on top and it is done. I have never served this over like rice or anything it just kind of is a low carb thing for me when I make it but you could um you serve it in a bowl um I did not take a picture of this because it's not that beautiful it's just kind of like veggies and chicken with pesto that like you know how pesto is it doesn't like stay nice and bright green um, but it's, it's, this is really good and it's easy. It's a great way to use up veggies. If you have a CSA, like I do, I'm just like throwing stuff in there. You know, you could do anything. Um, I don't love store-bought pesto. I prefer to make my own, but like on a weeknight, if you're at the store, I grab one. And then this is just kind of a unique way to flavor, like a skillet meal. I don't think of putting pesto in that usually. So, um, super good budget bites. Um, and, um, yeah, really easy. And um, you could do it with shrimp. Uh, we're speaking that we talked about shrimp in our previous episode, but um, yeah, you talk about, you could do it with shrimp. She, someone was like, someone commented like, oh, could I do it with tofu? And 
uh, the author of the recipe agreed with me. She was like, I don't think that would be that good. So <laughs> maybe not for um, non-meat eaters. But anyway, that was it. It was good. That yeah. sounds great. Yeah, it yeah. <laughs> I, I you're and a lot of the times I do I'll do put more of you know Asian flavors in stir fried veggies, but but I guess with zucchini is something I will do with parm. But anyway, it sounds really super tasty and simple. Yeah, same. We make stir fry all the time, and right now I have so much basil to use up. So I need to make pesto. This is perfect. I'm going to make this next week. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> it is very good and easy. So, all right, Beth, time for your dinner in a hurry. All right. Also, I was going to suggest you could um, have it with orzo too. Little Oh yeah, that would be delicious. Or some angel hair pasta. So, all right. Well, I did, I hearkened back to a lot of people's college days, I don't really remember doing ramen noodles as much as a lot of people, you know, like ramen, the 10 cent ramen. But I found a recipe where you kind of um, uh, uh, zhuzh it up a little uh, with shrimp. So this is, this was just with some, I don't even have the ingredients, uh, website. Um, Skinny taste simple. No, that's where they got the cookbook. Sorry, it's barefeetinthekitchen.com. And it's, uh, anyway, it's super simple. Okay, you just um, heat up ginger and garlic in a frying pan, and then you add shrimp. Um, you let that cook a little bit. And, oh, also you don't use the, flavor packet of the of the ramen um you then once that's cooking I didn't mention that you have to rinse the shrimp obviously and take the shells off but anyway uh saute that for a minute and a half or so add broth and mushrooms to the pot cook for five to six minutes and then you uh throw in your ramen noodles and uh, garnish it with with scallion, and I have a picture, um, and that was it. And as I was eating it, and this was a few months ago that I made it, I was like, I wonder why I didn't get into. I mean, why don't I think of this? Because you can just, I mean, talk about dinner in a hurry. You know, you got a few things here, throw in some broth, and it was quite tasty. Yeah, I have, I didn't, I know people who do that with their ramen, who like use it as the base, but then throw in extra veggies and stuff and do their own thing instead of the flavor packet. And it's never occurred to me, but as you were talking, I was like, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Like, you know. Yeah, and well, I said, we, we need to, we need to be buying ramen noodles. It's just not, it's, I think maybe from having had it, Probably when our kid, I think it was more like when the kids were growing up and they liked eating it. That's probably have a lot of it, but um, uh, yeah, it's just something you can pull out and you can season it with anything. You use leftovers uh, at leftover meat if you have it. Um, there was something else I was gonna say. I don't remember, uh, but garlic ginger failed me. It's good though. Yeah. I feel like ramen gets a bad rap in some ways. Like, I feel like when I was little, my mom was like, oh, like, no, that's like, there's no nutrients in that, which is true. But then if you add veggies and do what you did, it's like, well, now right. there is. So. Right. Um, and plus, yeah, there's so many ramen uh, restaurants these days. You know, it's really, it's not the way it was, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, when it comes the way we identify ramen, but um, yeah, it gives it's a uh, new spin on on ramen. So yeah. Anyway, enough of that. If we don't have anything else, I'm gonna say thank you for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org 
to find the recipes we talked about and share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we'll be talking about cool cauliflower. We look forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share that little recipe with recipe share.